Welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be continuing our discussion of how to use Win32Com events from the Excel application. So this is an extension to one of my previous videos where we saw how to work with those events. In the last video, we wrote some code that did some of the following. So we defined sorry, defined a couple of class objects, each one of them representing the events that we want to take place at a particular um, object inside of our object hierarchy. We then define the functions, which were basically the events that were the ones that we wanted to have things happen when they took place. So for example, inside of my application object, we have an event called onsheet activate. And all this particular function would do is it would print out that uh, you had activated a new sheet if you had selected a new sheet inside of the Excel application. And this worked fine and everything like that. However, it does run into some issues if you want to say, for example, uh, stop pumping messages when you close down Excel, for example. Uh, this program will not kind of be able to handle that. It kind of just goes into this weird loop where it gives you back this error thing and then it pops up the council and everything like that. And so that's a little bit of a problem. We want it to make it a little bit more uh, easier to close down the events as we do things like, for example, close the Excel application. We would like it if behind the scenes Python would close down with the Excel application so that way we don't have to kind of worry about any of this stuff being left open behind the scenes and then potentially throwing an error. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the code that we currently have here and we're going to throw it into Visual Studios, which I already have done. And if you go inside of here, um, it's pretty much all identical up until this point. I have removed the part where we are pumping out the messages just because that's going to be the part that we're changing. And then I've also made one slight adjustment. I am now using the uh, systems module. And this is because um, we have to close out the terminal once the application has stopped running. So we're going to make sure that when we run it here and we close the Excel application that it closes out the Python terminal, which is what we want. Um, and then what we're going to see in the final part of this video is we're going to be able to basically assign this event, uh, this event script to a macro inside of our workbook. So that way, you know, I'll keep it simple in this example, but the idea kind of holds, which is, okay, you, you run this macro, it then, you know, spins up this Python script that you can then have run behind the scenes, uh, utilizing certain Python events, uh, and then doing certain Pythonic things when those events take place. So that's kind of the idea behind this is we're going to extend the event functionality to include kind of more Pythonic uh, things happening. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick up kind of right down here at the bottom and we're going to do a couple things. The first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to define an initializer or yeah, I guess that's again how we can kind of say it. Um, with this one, I give it a variable name called keep open and I set that equal to true. Now, if you remember in the previous code, what we say here is we're saying, hey, as long as there's messages, keep pumping them. Well, we're going to make this where this is now going to change if something takes place inside of our Excel application. So for example, if we close our Excel application, well, I don't want to keep pumping messages because the the application that's supposed to be pumping the messages is no longer happening or it's no longer there. So the minute we close the Excel application, I want this to go from true to false. So that's why I'm defining it in this kind of initializer variable. So that way, if at a certain point I close my Excel application, it will then turn to false and it will stop pumping messages and it will close the program, which is what we want. So here, what we're going to say is while there are messages, keep displaying them and also as long as the Excel app is still open. And so what we're going to say is while keep open. So as long as it's true, which for the most part it will be until we actually close the Excel application, then display the message, display the message. And then this is the same that we saw in the previous video. We just go into our Python com module and then we do pump, uh, let me pump waiting messages. And then that will display the message like we're used to seeing. 
Now this is the tricky part. This is the part that we now have to build some structure into it so that way it's gonna constantly be looking whether the Excel application is open after it's, after it's displayed the message. Now, I'll be honest, this was a little bit buggy for me and so I kinda had to do these two workarounds in order to get it to work. It wasn't just simply saying something like, check if the Excel application is open because if you ever open up your task manager, just to show you, um, <clears throat> a lot of times what can happen, and this is probably not gonna work right now, but if I close this, if you scroll down, you'll sometimes see a laggering uh, Excel application running behind the scenes. And so right now you're not currently seeing it, but normally what happens is when we try to quit the Excel application, there will still be kind of this running instance behind the scenes. So even though we're not seeing it, it's still technically open. And so if we make it where the script is only looking for the if the Excel application exists or not, there's a problem because even though it might be closed, it's still actually, there might still be an instance running behind the back uh, in the background. And that's where the issue comes into a, a problem that we have to do it. So what I found that works is, um, I wrap it in a try accept statement, and then I basically ask the question, which is, if the Excel workbook count uh, doesn't equal zero, then you can keep open to true. Otherwise, if workbook count is um, <clears throat> equal to zero, then we can assume that the Excel application is closed. That was how I got it to work. If somebody comes across a better solution, by all means share it. I'm very open to hearing it. I kind of don't like this method, but it was the only one I could really get working. So what I do is I wrap it in a try accept statement. And so the try accept statement basically just does this. So we'll say try accept. Um, and what we're gonna say is, we're then gonna have in the try component, if the Excel, oh, apparently I'm getting messages now. Uh, if the Excel workbooks dot count does not equal zero, then keep open is equal to true. I'm gonna put this down a little bit. <clears throat> and then in the situation where workbook count does equal zero, then we need to do some stuff. So then we're gonna say else keep open equals false. I wanna make sure that we remove our memory reference to the Excel application. So I set that equal to none and then I exit my program. So I do a system exit, and that usually fixes it. So this is the one that I found works, I would say, in most cases. That seemed to be the one that was working fine for me. With the accept one, if there's still an error for whatever reason, um, I just say keep open equal false. Again, um, Excel equals none and then do a system exit. Uh, the reason I'm doing it like this, just say for example, <clears throat> it tries to pump messages but it doesn't see an active Excel application, it's gonna push an error. So if it's pushing an error, worst case scenario, just close it. I mean, if there's an error, just close it. I don't care what it is, but let's just close it at this point. So this is a very broad exception. At this point, I'm just saying, if there's an error, just close out the Python script. That was again the workaround because for whatever reason, it just, if that laggering instance held behind, it would try to pump a message, but then it would get an error when it tried to pump the message. And so in that situation, I just say, close it out, just go to the worst case scenario and just stop the script from running. That seemed to be the best working example. And then hopefully that kind of fixes the issues that we were having it. See, I don't know why it does that. It opens like, uh, is it this one? Yes. Okay, perfect. So here, if the workbook count does not equal zero, we can assume Excel is open. So basically keep pumping messages. And then here what we're saying is otherwise, close the application, and exit the script. This is kind of the worst case scenario is if there's an error, uh, close Excel and exit the script. That's kind of, again, the worst case scenario. 
So ideally, when we run this, um, it should work just like we were expecting. So I'm going to start it up. Okay, so it's running. It's working just kind of like I was expecting before. So everything's fine. I, it's, again, it's capturing the different events that we defined in the previous video. So I'm happy with that. But then the important part is when I close it, it closes out of the script. So that's the important part is then it closes it and then it stops the messages for money. That's the important part. That's what I want to have happen when this happens. So again, that was the important part of this component. So now that we've made it where it stops running once Excel is closed, then we're going to actually exit the program. And so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this script and we're going to basically attach it to a macro inside the Excel workbook. We're going to call the script, which will then start it up. It'll start listening for the events. It will run the, the, the statements that we want to have run with those events. And then when we close our Excel application, it should work beautifully. So again, I'm going to open that back up. I'm going to open up the workbook that um, I want to have the script uh, in. And so this is the one. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to delete that. And then from here, I'm going to go to my developer tab. I'm going to go to Visual Basic. And inside of it, I already have the script there. If you saw my video on uh, writing Python scripts, this should look very familiar because it's pretty much the same exact code. Uh, all we're doing is we're creating a subroutine. In this case, I give it the name Excel Python Events. Uh, I declare a couple variables. The first one is an object shell. This is basically going to be our scripting shell where we um, pass through um, the arguments that we want to execute in the command line. And then we define two strings, one that represents the Python exe file, and then the other one that represents the Python script itself. So we create a new instance of our scripting object. We define the location of our exe file and our Python script, and then we simply run that particular uh, script using it. A couple key notes here. Uh, first of all, you have to make sure that the interpreter that you are going to be running can actually has Win32COM installed on it. Otherwise, it will just close automatically and it won't give you an error. So I have Win32COM installed in Anaconda. So I'm going to use the Anaconda version, uh, the Python interpreter in the Anaconda folder. And then finally, naturally, the next bigger question is, now you need to tell me where your particular uh, Python script is. Now I have mine in my OneDrive and then there's another folder called Growth Tutorial Videos and then it's called Event Check. This can be wherever you want. You can put it on your desktop, you can put it with the, the same folder as the Excel workbook. It's really up to you, but you do need to provide the path to the script that contains the, um, the event script inside of it. That's the only key thing. Also remember to use triple quotes uh, when you do have spaces inside of your script, or sorry, inside of your path. Uh, I just usually keep it triple quotes regardless just because that seems to be the most reliable one and all of that kind of fun stuff. But from here, this is really, uh, again, if you saw the Python script one, that video, I'll put a link below, but it's identical. I mean, it's a very quick video and it's very simple to kind of run a Python script from VBA. So the idea here is, okay, we're now inside of our Excel workbook, so I should be able to kind of just, um, you know, do something like this where I can run my, my Python script. So as you can see, okay, great, it's running. It looks like both the events are working. That's fine. I'm happy. The important part is um, if I close it, it closes the script as well. So that's the important part. That was the part that was crucial that took me so long to figure out. I was once doing this really complicated aspect that I'm looking back now, I'm like, why in God's name was I doing it like that? But that's the crucial part is when I close the Excel application, it closes the Python script. We didn't necessarily see that when we were running it from Visual Studios, but when you're actually inside the Excel workbook, it seems to work fine. It seems to close the terminal and all that fun stuff. So then we kind of get this nice clean exit. Again, this was the other important part is again, there was no lagging component I can't promise that there won't be an issue with that. It, it's popped up before, but if you get a lingering Excel thing, that just seems to cause 
the bulk of the issues is when you have that lingering Excel application running behind it. So again, just for demonstration purposes, let's reopen. Again, I keep opening that one. Good Lord. <laughs> I want to open up the hard... That, that's the thing, that little, ever since I updated to the new Windows one, I mean, I love the new Windows update, but now they have the the online version and the, the local version. It throws me off a little bit. So again, if I go to my developer tab, I open up Visual Basic. Great, it starts my Python script. Ideally, you could do some pretty interesting stuff where, you know, if they click a button or they click a cell, you could make an API call. Lots of kind of cool stuff you could potentially work with. But the nice thing is now you're starting to mesh the two, which is, I think, the fun part. You know, that kind of opens up, you know, the uh, the ideas of what you potentially could do. Uh, I know somebody messaged me before they were having to do some stuff with uh, a trading API. So they wanted to have uh, data flow in dynamically with these events. Uh, you do have to be, we, well, we kind of ran into an issue because with his, it seemed like when we were running our events, it was kind of messing up what they were looking for in their events. So I wasn't really sure kind of what was causing the issue with that one, but I don't know if they were actually able to get it, but you gotta be careful when you have two programs looking for the same events. It seemed to cause a little bit of an issue. Um, but for the most part, I think you're not gonna really have that situation, hopefully. That's the goal at least. So with that being said though, that does conclude our video. So if you have any questions about using Python events inside of an Excel workbook, please put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates. I'll make sure to upload it to GitHub and that will pretty much do it for the events unless some people have some little other things that we maybe want to talk about. But this should be pretty much enough to get most people started, I would think. And kind of give them the framework they need to build what they need to build, hopefully. So thanks again for watching everybody. In our next video, we're gonna be covering more JavaScript API. Thanks again for watching.